So when we originally designed this system, we had a choice to make. Do we have a centralized pumping station or do we go with individual pumps for each lane? Now we chose to go with individual pumps for each lane. That way, if there's a disease in one of the lanes, it would not contaminate all the other lanes. So it, it keeps the system healthier. But each of these uh, pump motors requires about 12 amps of electricity. And if you haven't caught on by now from our other videos, we are definitely short electricity. So we want to maximize the usage of pumps for uh, total efficiency. So for every amp that we use, we're getting as much out of it as we possibly can. Uh, one idea is to go back on our original decision and go with a centralized pumping station. If we do that, we get rid of the four pumps, go to one big pump, and that one big pump has to deliver the um, water to all four lanes at a lift of 12 feet for the microgreens and a run of 60 feet maximum on each lane. So those are, for those of you that want to do calculations, that's going to be your total pump head there. Uh, so I think it's 12 feet vertical head and then for your horizontal, I think, what, is it like one foot ahead per 10 feet or something like that? So potentially another five feet of uh, head from your horizontal friction loss. Um, so, this, what is that, 17, 17 feet ahead, so we'll just call it 20 feet ahead is what this pump system would have to have, and it would have to be doing it to four lanes at one time. So I think you multiply that out and you get 20, that's 100 feet for 80 feet, 80 feet of total head that you would need to move everything through a central pump for just the aquaponics. Um, if we go with the geothermal heating, we'll need another pump system, or we'd use the same one to move the um, water from each of the fish tanks out through the geothermal system and then back in uh, to the uh, grow to the grow beds and to the watering system. Uh, that would probably be best is to have a central pump, and then the hard part is. And I don't know how to do this. I don't think a manifold would work. But we need to suck equally out of all four lanes at the exact same time. So if you know how to do that, please send me an email at trm at therealmartian.com because that's the one where I'm just not familiar with pumps and I don't know what the technologies are. But if we go with a central pump, one pump for this entire building, we reduce our total amperage, but we'd have to be able to suck water out of all four lanes equally at the same time and then send distribute that water with a total head of um, 15 feet, but four times. So I just round that up to 20, 20 feet four times, so 80 feet total head. Um, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm doing this from memory. I think this is how you would do it. So that's the challenge with the pumps. Again, the pumps have to supply water uh, to all four lanes. If we go with a central pump, it has to go to all four lanes. And one big thing, you can't really see it from there. Let me change the camera view. When we did our original experiment in the office, one of the things that was important is that the fish actually have a current to swim against. This creates a healthier environment for the fish. It gives them some exercise. So instead of looking like me right now with my winter fat on, they're a lot more, you know, LA beach body tone. Uh, which is a lot better for them, a lot better for the consumer as well. So what we've done in, in the small experiment that we did, you can actually buy a little, a little um, excuse me, uh, current pump. And you, you mount that in your aquarium and it blows water out and then the fish naturally swim right into that. And they can just sit there and kind of hover and get their exercise. It's like a hamster wheel only for fish. So what we did is uh, the pump right now moves water through this PEX pipe, goes up to the upper grow lane down here as necessary. It also has this big inch and a half line that's running down to the very end. And that's creating, that drops back down into the water and shoots this way. So you get an inch and a half worth of a water jet pushing back the water this way. And then the pump inlet is down here so that we create a circular loop and actually create a small current down there. It's not big but it's better than zero in pure stagnant water. And again, our water's staying nice and clean. It's really quite nice. So uh, whatever pumping solution we go with, we need to be able to move the water to the aquaponic beds that are non-microgreen based. So that's this type of setup where we have the main PEX line coming here. It branches up to an upper bed 
And if we have an upper bed, then we actually turn the valve off to the lower bed, and the upper bed fills. As it fills, it reaches its drain point, it drains in the lower bed, it fills and it drains. So you only have one valve open per double decker. Uh, so here's my nemesis bed. This is the one that never likes to work. Uh, so you have to do the aquaponics. You also have to do the microgreen lanes, which will be the overhead spray system uh, with the rotating shelves going underneath of it, plus valves going to the lower beds uh, for the flood and drain to maintain the aquaponics uh, and the balance of our water usage, uh, the nitrates, nitrites, and the fish, keeping the fish water clean. Uh, you also have to have the pump suck water out of the fish tanks, send it through the PEX tubing going out through the geothermal system, if that's what we choose to go with, and then bringing that back in and dumping into uh, the fish tanks. Uh, so you have um, the water being either cooled in the summertime or heated in the wintertime. And that's what the pumps would need to do.